Hello, time for a little project update. I realized I haven't verbally spoken to the camera about this project, so this is a little check-in. Right, so we got some raglan yoke action happening. I decided to do a twisted rib um, for five stitches along the raglan increases. And I'm just doing make one right and make one left on either side of those five stitches for the raglan increases. And but I have included a steak panel here at the front. So when this sweater is pretty much all knit up, I'm gonna cut a line straight down the middle to steak it, which kind of gives me heart palpitations, but it is what it is. That's the whole reason I'm doing this project is to attempt to learn how to steak. But it's a very simple cable. It probably looks different than other cables that you may be familiar with because there's no purling to separate the cables. So it's kind of like cables on a stockinette background which I think makes it really subtle and I like the texture. The other thing, I did some short rows. So I am following, as a general guide, I'm following instructions from this book. It's called The Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters by Ann Budd. I've heard about this book quite a lot and I don't really have any aspirations to become a legitimate knitwear designer, but I was struck with some inspiration, so here we are. I use it as a guide in terms of the stitch count and the gauge and sort of the raglan placement and like the increase rate and the number of increases and all that. I follow from this book, but the instructions for the raglan in this book don't it's just very simple so it's like a one stitch raglan you're increasing on either side of one stitch and there are not so much short rolls you're more so working flat to create the short rows and then joining the round um, what I did differently there is I cast it on joining the round immediately it's kind of windy so forgive forgive that background noise and then I proceeded to do some German short rows at the top. So I'm not savvy enough to figure out how to incorporate the cable pattern into that German short row situation. So I hope it doesn't look too weird when the piece is finished. But if I hold it like this, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This side here is the back. And you can see that it's raised up considerably from this side, which is the front. Um, as I've been working it up, I had a little bit of a concern that the neck was too wide. Uh, when I hold it up like this, it doesn't look too dramatically wide. But the other thing I reminded myself of is that I have seven extra stitches um, adding to the circumference for this steep panel. And I haven't added a collar. So I want to pick up the stitches around this neck edge probably before I even steak it because either way I'm knitting the collar, I'm going to be knitting the collar flat. I don't know what I'm going to do for the collar. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But either way, once I add the collar, I think the neck is going to fit a lot more like I want it to. And furthermore, it's a cardigan, so I'm not super picky about the neck being really close fitting like a crew neck like I prefer in my pullover style sweaters. So I think that'll be fine either way. I did try it on, try on the yoke last night and it seems to be fitting well. I don't really see any glaring issues. Like I'm, I think this is progressing pretty well, all things considered. Um, I'm gonna have some decisions to make when it comes time to split for the sleeves because I don't know, I'm considering continuing this twisted rib detail down the side of the body as well as the inside of the arms which I think will be easy enough to do but that's kind of a decision I need to make and I also need to decide how I want to divvy up the stitches between the the body and the sleeves 
do I want to divide it somewhere within the twisted rib raglan stitches or have all of the raglan stitches continue down the body and you know how do I want my sleeves to fit all the stuff like that um, so once I finish all of the raglan increases and I'm ready to split for sleeves I'm gonna pop on my cord extender and try on the yoke again to kind of see how everything is fitting obviously but also decide how I want to proceed in terms of splitting for the body and the sleeves so yeah that's pretty much all I have I'm kind of figuring it out as I go along I've thought a little bit about what type of button band that I want to do and what type of trim so do I want to continue the twisted rib and the hem and the cuffs and the collar or do I want to do some type of I, you know, I've had thoughts. I've had thoughts. Nothing is set in stone yet, so I'm not even going to go there, but I am actively thinking about it as I reach the point of, um, like, the next project milestone. The whole reason I decided to do this project is because I'm going on a knitting retreat, which I'm really excited about. And they're going to be like classes and knit nights and games and probably all types of fun stuff. Uh, but one of the classes that is going to be offered is steaking. I've never steaked before and I thought it would be fun to have a project in the steaking stage um, to take with me on that retreat and uh, learn how to steak. Um, and I thought about what project I wanted to do for some time. So I considered doing a bonnet. There's some color work bonnets on Ravelry that include a steaking element. I thought about doing a cardigan for a baby, but I don't have a baby and I don't really know any babies. Well, I know a few babies, but I'm just, I wanna make something for me because that's just where I'm at with my making journey right now. I love making things for myself and there's nothing wrong with that. And so, I went on to Ravelry. So once I decided, you know, I want to make something for myself, A, I got a little nervous because at this point now, the retreat is like almost exactly a month away. Um, and this is probably going to be a quite an oversized piece. So I questioned whether a month's time was going to be enough for me to have a full adult sized garment pretty much entirely knit and ready for steaking before the retreat. This was not in my plan. I generally plan what projects I'm going to do, what projects I'm going to, you know, work on next to have like my queue lined up for the next few projects at least. This was nowhere in the plan. So I'm totally just going off the book here. Um, but I did want to make a garment for myself. So I was like, let's just get it done. But when I searched on Ravelry for cardigan patterns, that involves steaking. I didn't want to do color work because I knew that would take me a lot longer. I'm not the fastest color work knitter, at least I don't feel like it, and I don't know that I was in the mood to do an entire color work piece that, that's pretty intense for me, um, and I don't know that I would want to wear something like that. And aside from that, I wasn't really interested in buying yarn for whatever project I decided to make, so whatever, scratch that idea. And then the rest, were like vests and cardigans that included steaking, but I didn't really like any of them. Like any of them that were non-color work, basically. Specifically the cardigans, I was just like, mm, didn't really love any of them. And who's to say? I may hate this one too, but at least I tried. So that is when the idea sort of creeped into my mind of actually making up a pattern of my own. My mom got me the, this book for the top down sweaters for my birthday. So I had that handy already. I had this yarn that I wanted to make a pitch coat with, but I changed my mind. So I just repurposed it for this project. And then I thought about it for like a night in terms of, okay, do I want to do any type of texture in the pattern? And I thought about the cables. So cool, I'll do the cables. And then I was like, I don't want a plain like one stitch raglan. I would like to do some type of decorative element for the raglan increases. And I had just bound off and blocked my Rift Tee by Jacqueline Cizak, which includes a trim of twisted rib and twisted rib detail down the side. So twisted rib was fresh in my mind. So I was like, cool, the raglan's gonna have twisted rib. 
and then I figured out how to do the German short rows and the the rift tee incorporated German short rows too so both the German short rows and the twisted rib were fresh in my mind and it kind of all just worked out I spent probably a couple hours figuring out the math swatching deciding what size I wanted to make um figuring out how to modify the raglans to be more stitches instead of the one stitch that's in the book that wasn't too difficult uh, so yeah so here we are uh and i think it's going really really well um so i'll probably check in again once i split for sleeves and i decide how i want to proceed with knitting the rest of it i'll check in so yeah So here's a project update. We have obviously split for sleeves and for this side panel here, I um, sort of extended the twisted rib and sorry, I'm bad at showing these things. I sort of extended the twisted rib here from the raglan down to the side. So there's kind of a continuous line there. I cast and on stitches from the underarm and since then I have been just working through the body. It's pretty simple. Um, all the work I had to put into it so far has just been upfront with figuring out all the math, what I need to cast, how many stitches I need to cast on, how to space the raglan increases. You know, I was I was contemplating, I've been contemplating, and I'm sorry, this clip is so long. I've been contemplating about doing like some type of decorative element with this side panel here like maybe sort of having it like once I get to a certain point sort of having it the ribbing extend and sort of create a triangular downward slope this way to where at the bottom we have a wider portion of ribbing and then obviously it'll go into the ribbing at the hem I thought that would be cool, but part of me feels like I'm being too ambitious, but starting this project in the first place was really ambitious. So I'm not 100% sure I'm going to try to figure that out. I'm probably not because I just don't have the brain space. We returned to the office this week and honestly, I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm probably not going to do that specifically I'm just going to continue this pattern as is 
and just do twisted rib for for the hem. I'm so excited. <sighs> I just got my dreadlocks tightened and I feel like a new woman. I realized it has been a while since not only I collected any footage of me knitting on this project, but also since I sat down and gave a little bit of a verbal update to clue you in on what's currently happening with the project. There was honestly not been a lot to report because the last clip I recorded, I was well into the body. I gave you the breakdown of like what's happening with the raglan increases and the twisted rib details and all that. So you've seen the key elements of the project really. I guess the key update that I wanted to share was that I have decided to go with a split hem. So here in the front are both of the front hem panels and I am now knitting on the back hem. So nothing too exciting. I don't have the measurements in terms of how long I knit the body before starting the before starting the hem, but I think at some point when the project is fully knit, I will take all the, the measurements, the final measurements, and include that in my Ravelry project page for anyone who's curious at all. Um, I know in the last clip I said I wanted to have this project pretty much all knit and ready to steek in time for my knitting retreat. Uh, today is Friday, May 6th, and the knitting retreat is exactly one week from today. Um, and as you can tell, the sleeves are nowhere in sight. And so instead of saying that I want the entire main part of the, car, uh, of the cardigan to be knit, I just want to get finish up this back hem. Um, even if I don't finish the back hem, the front and the body is completely knit, so... I am in a good position to be able to steep the cardigan open. So at least I was able to check that off the box. But honestly, my knitting mojo and my time and energy that I've been able to allot to knitting has been very sparse. So my progress, my rate of completion kind of steeply declined <laughs> since the last time I filmed the clip on this project. So. So in all honesty, there hasn't been a whole lot to report until now. And even now, I don't have a lot to share other than the fact that obviously I'm not going to have the sleeves done in time either. Um, but I will be able to steak it. And that's really all I wanted to make sure I was able to do. So I'm super happy about that. As far as the sleeve, I think I'm going to do just like a traditional semi-fitted sleeve uh, that tapers along with the with my arm and I want to do the same ribbing on the cuff but I'll probably double the length and do a folded ribbed cuff I really like the way that looks so that's the plan for the arms and I think after my knitting retreat I'm going to take an intentional step back from this project, put it down, and focus on some warm weather knits and other projects that I'm a little more excited about because as excited as I am about this project, I'm not going to be able to wear it. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to wear it for several months. Um, and I'm starting to feel like I'm s struggling along. Like I'm not super excited about this project like I was when I first cast it on. So I'm trying to listen to my intuition. And once I finish the hem, steak it and do the button band, potentially the collar as well, I'm going to put this project down probably for two to three months and pick it back up in the fall. Almost done. I think I have like 12 more rows of the back ribbing. 
and then I'm gonna bind off and block. I'm going to block it before the retreat. I'm gonna block the the body and the torso basically. And then, yeah. Wish me luck on the seeking. I probably won't get any footage of it because it'll be at the retreat. There will be other people there and filming in public is just not really my jam, but I will definitely report back when I get back from the retreat to let everyone know how the seeking went. I know I will be in good hands with Laura and Allison, so I'm certain it will go well, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous about it because cutting your knitting is scary, even if it's on purpose. So there's that. Um, I also wanted to try it on. Yeah, I think in its current state. Okay, so I'm happy with the length. I think it's a good length. I like where it hits. And I think the fit in terms of the amount of ease is a little misleading because cables have a tendency to kind of scrunch the fabric in. So once I block it, I think I'll have a much better idea of what the true fit is going to look like. I think the stitches I have here for the steek are about the depth the finished button band will be. So, yeah. But I will reserve my final judgment until after I have it blocked, which will be uh, probably two to three days from now. It'll be on the blocking mat and once it's dry, I'll pop it on again so you can see how it fits. Once, though, once these stitches relax and the fabric sort of fills out and opens up. So yeah, that's what it looks like. I like it, I, I do like it. Um, and I think I mentioned in my last clip, I was thinking of doing something fancy schmancy with this ribbing, doing some type of sloped sort of, you know, fancy stuff going into the, the ribbing. But I kept it simple and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not mad at myself for doing that because, yeah, it made it a lot simpler and I like the way it looks. All right, so uh, the goal. This weekend, I plan to finish the back hem and wet block this piece. Steak it at the retreat, and then I'll put it away for a few months. I will check in with you next time. I did not record the process of steaking, which is probably the main reason I even made this cardigan. So I'm a bad YouTuber, but that's okay because YouTube is not my profession. So I steaked it. It looks great. It fits great. I'm super happy with how the neck fits. One of, I guess, the things that always turn me off about like raglan, top down raglans, or even bottom up and circular yoke patterns is that you can often get like a boat neck type of situation. And I much prefer a closer fitting neck, more like a crew neck. And I've achieved that with this, but I, I didn't do anything specific. I kind of just made the pattern and luckily it worked out the way it did. Um, but yeah, here's how the neck fits. 
Very nice, very nice. Obviously, arms are missing. <laughs> and I also don't have buttons yet, but I think the, the main feature of this piece is the sticking. So, I will pop this off, turn the camera around, and give you a close up of the details. So like I said, went on a knitting retreat and one of my main goals uh, while at that retreat was getting this bat baby steeped. And as you can see, mission accomplished. So when I arrived at the retreat, and I'll try to remember to pop in a picture of like where I was at with this project um, when I left for the retreat. Essentially, none of the ribbing had been done. Um, it was just the the main body of the cardigan here with the stockinette strip down the middle where the steak is now. And when I got there, I thought, okay, I will reinforce the steak and cut open the steak. And that will be like my to-do list for this project at the retreat. However, upon conversation with Laura McDougal, one of the instructors and organizers of the retreat. She actually advised that I pick up the stitches for my button band before actually doing the steak. And I'm so glad she told me to do that, even though I wish I would have known that I could have done that before getting there because then this piece would have also been done. But essentially, before I did any sticking, any reinforcing, any cutting, I picked up all of the stitches for the button band, both of them, and I knit the button band. And I figured while I was at it, I would also do the collar. So I went back and forth a little bit on whether I wanted to do have the button band stitches that are knit this way extend all the way up to the edge here, in which case I would have had to pick up the stitches, do the collar first, and then knit this way but instead I'm having the collar come is this too technical I don't know but I went back and forth I'm I'm happy with how this turned out and like having the button band only come up here and then the collar sort of be continuous around um if I were to make something like this again I would probably have the button band go all the way to the top so that I can put a button here and it can sort of be a full closure jacket style cardigan. Although I could have put a buttonhole here. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but that's kind of one small thing I would change. Other small thing I would change is that the make one rights for me look a little bit less put together than the make one lefts. So you'll notice that there is just a little bit of extra space with these stitches here as opposed to the make one right on this edge. And so it makes it a little asymmetrical because obviously now for this sleeve we have a make one, wait, a make one, no, this is the, okay, make one left, make one right is the, the loosey goosey one. So it's not as symmetrical on either side. So if I were to make this again, I would probably rearrange the stitches a little bit and change how I do the increases so that they look more symmetrical. As far as the button holes on the button band, I continued the one by one twisted rib. Um, and I found a free cardigan pattern on Ravelry and just followed the button band instructions. And I didn't put a whole lot of thought into the spacing of the buttons. I have seven buttonholes here and they're evenly spaced apart, but if I put a little more thought into it, I have the, the top button band or the top buttonhole here is a little bit oddly placed, but because I have the collar extending from here, it doesn't look too weird. But for example, if this was truly the top of the cardigan, that placement of a buttonhole would be super strange and I'll probably have to redo it. But it all worked out and I'm relatively happy with how it looks. And for the juicy details, let's bust this baby open and show you the steak. It's 
So I did a crochet reinforcement with a contrasting yarn. So this purplish bluish yarn you're seeing is just my crochet slip stitches. And I used the brown yarn to sort of tack the panel down because otherwise this fabric here would be kind of hanging loose. So I just sewed it down so it's nice and secure and out of the way. I am not an expert on steaking. So if you have any specific questions, I probably won't be able to answer it for you. All I can say is that under Laura's tutelage, I was able to make some sort of sense out of this. So this is what we're working with. It does look a little bit odd because the body of the cardigan has been blocked, but this additional knitting that I did, so the button band and the collar have not been blocked. So they're poking out and looking a little strange, but I'm 100% confident that once I block it, it'll look nice and neat. One of the things that kind of annoys me is that I have this little dip here on the perpendicular edge where I pick up stitches and I call myself trying to pick up the very edge stitch so that I have a straight line here but I think it's just the the ribbing sort of folding in on itself and I'm hoping that once I block it this will be less obvious same with down here but again once I block it I think that edge will be pretty straight so I will reserve my final judgments until blocking is done. Yes, I'm gonna take a break from this project to focus on some more seasonally appropriate knitting and crocheting. So we can bid this project farewell for a few months and I will pick it back up in the fall and give you guys a part two to see how the sleeves work up and to see the cardigan in its final finished state. So I hope you've enjoyed part one. Um, let me know what you think. If you like it, I like it. I hope you like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think I'll do a detailed sort of review of my final thoughts when it's all done. So I'm not even gonna go down that rabbit hole now. I just wanted to check in, give an update. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Give an update on how the steak went, um, if I had any issues, which I didn't, and what it looks like. Literally, the only thing I have left is to find some buttons, sew the buttons on, and knit the sleeves. There's gonna be some math to figure out with the sleeves. But yeah, let me know what you think. I hope I've inspired you to maybe modify an existing pattern that you're comfortable with or go out of your comfort zone entirely to make your own custom self-drafted piece. I mean, take me as an example. I am not a knitwear designer. I've only been knitting for a year and a half. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm figuring out as I go along. And look, it's working out. All right, I'll catch you guys in part two. Bye.